Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back. So today I thought I would sit down and bring you guys through my grounding toolkit and the tools that I use to manage my anxiety when it arises. This morning was actually quite an anxious morning for me and I used a number of these tools. It is currently 4 p.m. and I'm only sitting down to film this video and I thought it would be very fitting to share that with you guys because I know especially after the last couple of years with the pandemic a lot of people who didn't previously suffer from anxiety are now suffering from anxiety and I know it's a very common struggle a lot of us face on a day-to-day -day basis. These tools now live at the forefront of my brain and I'm now at a point where no matter how panicky I am, even if I'm in the middle of a panic attack, these things are so deep rooted in my brain, I'm able to just do them. I don't need to think because obviously if you are in the middle of a panic attack, you're not thinking straight, you can't even access your coping skills a lot of the time. Um, so just having a couple of things there to hand that you know you can do to help yourself to bring yourself back down to baseline. I've suffered with panic attacks for years and thankfully I don't have half as many now as I used to and a lot of that is because I have learned to manage my anxiety a lot better so I can kind of catch the panic arising and then kind of interfere with some of these tools so I don't reach the panic attack stage. Now of course I still do have them, I've had a couple this month but they're way less often than they used to so be. So when I say grounding you might be like what is grounding? So essentially grounding is a form of mindfulness and it's all about paying attention to your present surroundings often when we are in a state of anxiety or in a state of panic you know it's solely based from fear and worry and our heads are running away from us so we're often not with our two feet on the ground standing here we're away in another world so it's about pulling yourself back into this moment so the first tool I'm going to talk about is the tip scale and this is actually something that I learned in therapy and it has been a genuine lifesaver for me sometimes I emotions are so intense that it takes away our ability to use our other coping skills. Tip skills won't take our emotions away altogether. They help take down the intensity of the emotions so that we can make use of the other things that we normally do, you know, to cope with difficult situations and difficult feelings. So when I'm talking about the tip scale, each letter stands for something different. So this is so helpful if you're in the middle of a panic attack because you just have to remember tip. Tip, T-I-P, you know, and then you know what you've got to do. So the first letter T stands for temperature and this has genuinely been the most helpful thing for me when I'm in the middle of a panic attack to bring the intensity of my emotions so down. So when we're talking about temperature, we're talking about changing the temperature of our body. So putting your face in cold water helps ease the intensity of the emotion by triggering what's called the mammalian dive reflex. When our face is submerged in cold water, our body is immediately kicking a part of our nervous system that slows everything down. This reflex slows our heart rate down and activates our parasympathetic nervous system. So what we're doing here is we're using our bodies to change our emotion. And it works, trust me it works. There's a number of ways in which you can do this. So the first one of course, as I said is submerging your face in ice cold water so getting a bowl with ice and holding your head in there try and hold your breath for 30 seconds and you can come back up you can also get into a cold shower you can put your face under the water you can hold your breath cold showers are amazing for also you know resetting your nervous system so it's like if you're in the middle of a panic attack it's like jump in a cold shower right now you can also get an ice pack and put it over your face the best way to do this if you are wanting to change the temperature of your body is by holding your breath while you're doing it because that will activate your nervous system to slow everything down so the areas you want to cover if you're putting an ice pack on your face is the whole areas around your eyes so like under your cheeks up here and above the forehead that's where the nerves are that you want to be hitting so you can hold either a really cold towel or an ice pack over your face something that I'll do if I'm not at home and I don't have access to a cold shower or a cold bowl of water is I'll run my wrists under cold water and then also put cold water on the back of your neck where your vagus nerve is located and then also you know if you're not wearing makeup or whatever you can splash cold water around your face so again in the same area there and that's essentially going to do the same thing like I've used that a lot of times when I've been out and it has helped me obviously it's not as intense so it's much better if you you can you know dip your head in a cold bowl of water or get in a cold shower but honestly I cannot recommend this enough lads like if you're in the middle of a panic attack if you feel that panic arising like I've I've caught myself a lot of times where I can feel myself going to that place and if I feel that 
I'll go straight for one of them options. So the I in tip skill stands for intense exercise. Now stay with me here for a minute, okay? So the whole point of tip skills is to help with managing your emotions now, not later. So these are things that are meant to help now in the moment of intense emotion. So one of the essential functions of emotion is to prepare us for action. When our emotions are intense, our body is primed for intense activity. So doing some intense exercise can help release some of that emotion. So what we're talking about here is a type of exercise that's available immediately because this is meant to help manage our emotions now, not later, remember? So it's not it's about something you have to get ready for, like horse riding, weightlifting, going for a light walk. I'm talking like skipping, running, something that's really going to get your heart rate up and something that you can do right now. I find a skipping rope incredible for that because obviously it's so accessible and you're really going to get your heart rate going with a skipping rope. And this is where I would like to thank Fabletics for sponsoring today's video you guys know they're my all-time favorite activewear brand and I thought it was pretty fitting but they're not just activewear now as you guys know over the last number of months probably year they have extended their range beyond activewear so they now do pajamas bikinis they do day-to-day -day wear so they have things like cargos they have really cute two pieces they have gorgeous summer sets they've got little dresses they just have everything now on site. It's not just solely active wear, which is amazing because for the month of August, you can get two trousers for 24 pounds and up to 80% off every single thing on site. So that goes for everything on site, you know, not just their active wear. So you can mix and match the two for 24 pounds and get whatever two trousers you like. So if you wanna get a legging and you wanna get a cargo or you wanna get a legging and a little short, you know, you can mix and match and get whatever you kind of want. One of my favorite things about Fabletics is the details that they put in their clothes. It's something that I have struggled to find in any other brand. As you can see in this blue slash navy two piece, the little detail under the boob and also the Fabletics on the waistband. And then we've got the holes throughout the leggings that make them super breathable. But it makes such a difference to an activewear set when you do have details like that because a lot of activewear sets are so boring I find whereas Fabletics adds a little bit of zoosh to it and it makes it a lot more wearable if you're not you know working out or whatever. Do we even need to talk about this pink set? You guys know this is the Oasis Twist sports bra, my all-time favorite sports bra out of all the sports bras I've ever tried in my time. They do absolute bits for the girls. They are so fucking flattering. I just obsessed that I have them in so many colors. I rave and rant about them all the time. And honestly, especially if you're part of the itty bitty titty committee, like it can be hard for us to find sports bras or just tops in general that are flattering. And this, need I say anymore, like it's just insane. One of my friends were over recently and she genuinely could not believe the quality of Fabletics. She was in awe. She was like, I need to get myself some of these by like putting them on and wearing them and feeling them. And that's the thing with Fabletics is you're getting super high quality pieces, but for a third of the price of other, you know, activewear brands on the market. Like I've watched my, washed my Fabletics so many times and they're still as good as the day I've got them. Like they're not bobbling up. The, the material hasn't been affected. Like they're literally as good as new. So I'll leave a little link down below but any two trousers for £24 and up to 80% off every single thing on site as well. So back to the tip skills. So the P in tip stands for pace breathing. Now I personally would use pace breathing after temperature and then intense exercise but I feel like it's just in this order you know for ease of being able to remember it. You don't have to do it in this order. So just as with the temperature scale pace breathing works by activating the parasympathetic nervous system as well. So this in turn will slow our heart rate down and decrease emotional intensity just like with the temperature scale. So when you're doing this you want to breathe into your belly to allow for a deeper and slower breath cycle. So I like to use 777. I know everybody uses different kind of numbers but I'll breathe in for seven, hold my breath for seven and then breathe out for seven. I find the best way of doing this is by setting a timer. So like saying you have to sit here and do it for five minutes. Like you can not just do this for a minute you need to do it for an extended period of time to feel the effects on your body and um, so I normally will sit there for about five minutes or even more if I need to like depending on the situation and all you're focusing on is the breathing and by constantly having to count 
it's keeping your brain you know busy so you can't be thinking about all these other things that are causing your anxiety and your panic you have to focus in that moment as i was saying earlier these tools are now rooted in the front of my brain but the only way i got them rooted in there was by practicing these things when i wasn't in a state of anxiety or in a state of panic so moving on to our next tool so the next tool again is going to be for when you're in that state of panic and you're in that real intense state of anxiety among the many unpleasant and unsettling symptoms that comes with panic attacks is the rapid and uncontrollable breathing known as hyperventilation when this happens it quickly causes the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood to get out of balance now this is something that i use during an intense panic attack but if i cannot get my breathing under control i'll always have a brown paper bag to hand and i breathe into the brown paper bag so you just hold the paper bag around your mouth and you just breathe as you are hyperventilating into the bag and this calms your breathing down so 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 quickly with every exhale you're filling the bag with co2 and then with every inhale you're making that co2 available to your over oxygenated blood when you inhale your own exhaled air it's known as rebreathing and the theory with this is that after a moment of two of rebreathing it will help stabilize your blood ph and hopefully help ease some of the symptoms however it's important to note here that rebreathing is unsafe for certain people particularly those with heart or lung problems so just to make sure if this is something that you want to start using that you know you do your research that it's safe for you to use so now we're going to move on to some tools that we can use when we're at a more neutral state you know when we're more in control and we're not in that intense panic anxiety anymore and we've come down a little bit so the first thing is lavender i have used this since i was a literal child and i cannot tell you the benefits it has for anxiety I sleep with this on my pillow every night. This comes with me in my handbag anytime I leave the house. It's an absolute godsend. Lavender oil, again, has been shown to affect the parasympathetic nervous system, what we were talking about in regards temperature and um, pace breathing. The parasympathetic nervous system controls bodily processes associated with anxiety, such as heart rate, hormone secretion, and breathing rhythm. And lavender can help in regulating these body processes by restoring a neutral state. So lavender is scientifically known to help relax and calm you down. It is not just a myth. Um, so what I normally do is, you know, if I'm out and about and I'm a bit anxious or I'm feeling, you know, a little bit panicky, is I'll either put a bit of this on a tissue and smell the tissue, it's amazing, or I'll use a little lavender roller ball. So these roller balls are amazing. They're uh, pulse point roller balls. Um, because they have the roller, you can easily roll it on your wrists, you can roll it behind your ears, you can also roll it on your temples, you can basically roll it anywhere so that you're getting that, you know, instant relief and you can constantly smell it. You can also get these little roller balls in like de-stress oils and they have other variations of oils, but lavender is my personal go-to. It's the one that helps me the most. I've not found any other, you know, essential oil that calms me and relaxes me in the way that lavender does so when we're talking about grounding and pulling ourselves back into the present moment you're trying to focus on your five senses that's why things like this you know your your smell you're activating your senses another thing is incense sticks these are insane again so once we've brought ourselves back to a more neutral state you know you can sit there with your lavender you can even put this in an oil diffuser light some incense you're trying to pull your brain into the here and now and have things that you can focus on you know you can be very mindful of and that bring your brain here and not away with the bloody fairies where they want to be <laughs> our next tool is to write a to-do list slash brain dump i find this amazing you cannot argue with the power of getting something out of your head onto a bit of paper so just say if i've had a panic attack you know when you're panicking it's worry it's fear you've got so much manifesting in your head so once you're in a more neutral state you could be sitting there you know with your incense your candles your lavender get everything that's in your head out of your head because it's half the battle your brain can't cope with how much you have going on up there so just do a brain dump everything you're thinking everything you're worrying about not neatly writing it just write it out scribble it out get it out there and when you can do that and you write it down it just helps put that distance between you and the page so you're not trying to remember everything up here 
because we're only bloody human we're only able to cope with so much but also by writing it down and having that distance from it it makes you see things in different eyes and you know makes you have a bit of a different perspective putting space and distance between anything absolutely anything in life helps you know you kind of see things more clearly even just brain dump and be like i want to deal with that tomorrow but it's now out of my head and it's on the page i don't need to worry about it you know i need to take a couple hours this evening now for myself and i'll wake up and i'll deal with that list tomorrow do you know what i mean but it's just kind of bringing that panic down again so our next tool are these little rings so they're like little elastic rings actually one of thomas's my sister's husband's cousin gave me these at melanie's wedding melanie and thomas's wedding um and i freaking adore them she got them on amazon so as you can see they're literally just like little elastic bands these little fidgety things are amazing if you've got anxiety, especially if you're out and about. If you have an event, if you have something on that you're worried about, school, work, anything. These little things, like things that are very discreet that people can't really, you know, aren't going to notice or aren't going to pay much attention to. I find these amazing. Like if I'm out and I am fidgety or ang anxious, I'll just kind of play with these and like you know pull them and wrap them around my fingers and they're distracting and sometimes we need them little distractions so amazon have so many things like that whether it's like a stress ball or rings or there's little toys and all you can just throw in your bag so our next tool again is in relation to our five senses so this is taste so i absolutely adore herbal teas for anxiety i know a lot of people like mince and chewing gum as well especially if they're out and about mince can actually be amazing to have in your mouth while doing the praise breeding but i love of chamomile if it's like the second later half of the day the evening and i'm ang anxious having a panic attack or a mint tea then if it's like morning first half of the day still have shit to do um but they do absolute wonders and you know you could have your tea while you're sitting doing your brain dump this is the kind of stuff that i would do and really focusing on the flavors in your mouth how it feels the warmth of it going down your body it's about having little skills and tools that are again pulling you back focusing on the here and now using your five senses and as many of them that you can use the better the more the merrier our next tool and something that i would do you know with my tea after my brain dump would be a mindfulness practice you guys know that i'm a huge advocate for mindfulness practice it for a year and a half in therapy and it changed my life it changed my day to day it changed how i viewed the world it changed my thinking it made my brain so much clearer and i became so much more present and it helped my anxiety hugely because mindfulness is all about here and now so many of us live in the present and the past the only moment we have is now what is happening right now this is life this is all we have we do not have anything else and mindfulness brings you back into this moment here there's a so many mindfulness practices on youtube i have recently been using my fitbit since i've got it because they have so many mindfulness practices on that but there are so many resources online with mindfulness practices um and you can do a two minute one five minute one 10 20 an hour long mindfulness whatever suits you and even if you don't have a good attention concentration span mine is shocking absolutely terrible start small and just build your way up um, and then after mindfulness practice, our last tale would be to just get outside, change of scenery. When we've gone through a period of intense emotion, it is so draining. I know myself, if I have a panic attack, I feel the effects on my body and my brain for days. Like it really does take out you. But just getting out of the house, having a bit of a change of scenery. I find being outside going for a walk really mindful because, you know, through therapy, it made me really hone in to everything that you're seeing. So like pay attention to everything, really look at things in detail and focus on what you're seeing. You know, the trees, the grass, the flowers, the clouds, the sun, that house with a beautiful red door, you know, the beautiful window boxes on the house you're walking by, whatever you see, you know, and a little exercise you can do is kind of, you know, describing things in your head. So imagining how, you know, it might feel to touch it or whatever it is, but just being very mindful of what you're doing. Um, so a lot of the time, if I do have a panic attack or I have an intense bout of anxiety, I will get outside. 
and just breathing in the fresh air as well and moving your body and it's just all so beneficial but I find the biggest thing is the change of scenery so even if it's the case of I don't know maybe you live with your partner and just you know going for a little drive just anything if you're not up for a walk but I find getting outside personally very helpful they are all of my tools that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today I've been sat here a lot longer than I thought it would be but I really hope that this has helped some of you guys because these are things that I genuinely use anytime I am struggling inside with anxiety. If you have any tools that you use to manage your anxiety please leave them down below because I absolutely love when you guys share your own experiences and your own you know tips and tricks in the comments below because we're all learning from each other and it just feels like one big old family here and I love it so much. You're all so kind, so supportive, so understanding even with each other in the comments I could see you guys engaging with each other and it just warms my heart so much and I know a lot of you guys who watch me also suffer a lot with your mental health but you're not alone you know and we can learn to manage it much better and therefore making our day-to-day -day a lot more manageable you know it doesn't have to consume us you know we can take hold of it and take the control back I'm gonna wrap it up here but I really hope this was helpful and maybe you picked up a thing or two you didn't previously know but I love you guys so very much and I cannot wait to see you all in my next video Bye, my friends.